Hello and welcome to another episode of my Working with Todoist series. My name is Carl Pauline and this week it's all about the all new descriptions. Now what are descriptions? Well descriptions are these little extra text field that you can put into your tasks that give you that little extra information. And I'm going to show you how to do this in a second. But there is something I really need to stress before we go into how to do this. And that is whatever app you're using, whether it's Todoist or whether Apple Notes or Evernote or Notion or Obsidian, what you'll find is over time, the developers will add new features. Now it's really important to understand that you don't have to use every new feature that comes out. When you add, a when the features are added and you start to use it, it adds another layer of complexity to your system. And the whole idea is to keep your system as simple as possible. The simpler it is to use, the more likely you're going to use it consistently. So this new feature descriptions isn't something that's going to make it into my workflow really. I've seen a couple of places where I could use it, but overall I won't be using them on really on a day-to-day -day basis. That said, you might find that something about descriptions really works for you and that's great. And if you do have a unique way of using it, then please add your ideas into the comments below because it's great to share with other people. Okay, let me take you into my Todoist now and I'm gonna show you, this is my demo account, but I'm gonna show you how to set up descriptions. Okay, so let's get started with one way that I may have showed you a couple of weeks ago when I showed you my purpose and objectives board and that is you can put deadlines in. So if you are following my idea for having this purpose and objectives board that helps you to stay focused on the things that are important this week, this month and this quarter, what you can do is you can put in, for example, the deadline date. So let's for it say, for example, that I've got a time management and goal setting workshop with Apple that's going to be due on the 22nd of August. I can put the date in here. So that's going to give me a little bit of focus when I'm looking at it. It's a nice little reminder of when the workshop is due. And I can also then anticipate, sort of say, like at the time of recording, it's the 6th of August. So this is going to tell me that I've got about two weeks, just over two weeks to prepare for this workshop. Another way that I've thought of using this is for something like book writing. Now, I'm writing a book on the Time Sector system right now, and it could be that for this week, my goal, and I really want to focus on this, is to get to 50,000 words. So again, I can write into the description here, goal to reach 50,000 words. Again, it just helps to keep it in the front of mind, what is my goal? purpose what is my goal for this one again I've got a workshop example here again this could be the date that this workshop is going to take place and again on my objectives it could be this month's objectives is to complete 50% of the time sector system first draft which would be roughly 40,000 words so there's another way that you can use it Again, I've got in here a question. So this could be something like uh, for the Time Sector System course update for this year. I could actually put in a question like what needs to be updated or added. And what's really good about putting a question in here is it engages your subconscious mind, that powerful part of your brain that gives you the solutions and gives you answers to really difficult questions. But as with all things with the subconscious mind, it is actually your slow mind. So every time I go in here, I see those questions. And so subconsciously, I can be thinking about what needs to happen to update this course. So that's one way that you can use the new descriptions. Now, if I bring back the menu here, and that's just by hitting the M key, or I can go and hit the hamburger button up there. Let's go into my today version here. So what I've got here is a few other examples about what I 
could use descriptions for. So in here, for example, record podcast. So again, what I want to do is engage that subconscious mind. So this week is system building. So it gives me my title, my subtitle, if you like, my working title. But what I want to do is show you in here is your descriptions also have the ability to use to do is syntax or or text formatting. So in this case, what I've done is I've bolded this week. And to do that, what I've done is I've added the two exclamation marks either side of the words that I want to be bolded. So in this case, I wanted to bold this week. So it's exclamation mark, exclamation mark. I'll zoom in so you can see that better. Zoom, uh, so exclamation mark, exclamation mark, this week, colon, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. What that does then, when I hit save, you'll see that this week is bolded. So that's another way you, you can, so you can use the, the, the syntax or the text formatting tools that Todoist gives us. Another way here is I've got a call to call Ted, ask if you could fix the outdoor lights. Now it could be that Ted is usually having his dinner after 6 p.m. So call before 6 p.m. So I catch him before he's uh, before he has dinner. Another one here is a little note to say if I'm arranging a call with Kevin and Daniel for next week regarding employee onboarding, it could be, oh, Kevin's on holiday until Wednesday. So I can just put that little note in there to know that there's no point in holding this meeting on Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday or Monday and Tuesday because Kevin is not going to be available. Again, on here, like I record my YouTube videos on a Friday. And again, what I've done is I can say this week the videos I'm working on are to do and Evernote. Of course, I could put the whole thing in there. I could say Todoist is going to be on descriptions and Evernote is going to be on the daily note. But, you know, I decided that's what I'm going to do because I've got usually three or four areas that I often do videos on. So there you go. Those are just a few ways that you can use descriptions for. And like I said in the introduction, you know, whenever one of your apps updates and brings out new features, you don't have to use them if you don't find any particular use for them. The truth is, I don't really have any uses for descriptions in my own every day to do is simply because I've got a system that works and it doesn't need to be changed. But it's nice to know that this feature is here because if I did want it to add a note such as like Kevin's on holiday until Wednesday and I don't want to be going in and out of notes looking at comments then this is actually a good way of seeing it. But the best use I've found for it is for my purpose and objectives right here. Yes, move the menu because that gives me a great place to see. And this is one area where I have used it. And although this is my demo account, this particular objective, this right now, my big project this quarter is to write the Time Sector System book. And so this is a really good way to keep me focused on what each week's objective is. So if I get, let's say that my goal this week is indeed to write 50,000 words by the end of this week, I can actually calculate here that if I ended last week on 45,000 words, I know that this week I must write 5,000 words, roughly just under 1,000 words a day. And that gives me that incentive to keep working. And again, I could write that in there. I could say 750,000 words a day just to keep me focused on what I want to do with those objectives. And it's a great way without having to go into the task and to look at it. I can just see, right, yes, I must remember I've got to write. I've got to write. So there you go. That's just a few ways that you can use the new descriptions feature. But please don't feel that you must use it because it's a new feature. If it works for you, fantastic. If it doesn't work for you, hey, don't worry. You don't necessarily need to use it. You know, I think I've said many times before, in my everyday to do is I don't use labels. I don't need them. I've got a system that works for me and labels is not part of that system. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode. And it just remains for me now to wish you all a very, very productive week. Hello, thank you very much for watching my videos. Now I have something exciting to tell you about. Recently, I have developed a brand new time management system. It's a system designed to manage your time in the 21st century. The world has changed a lot over the last 20 years. In fact, it's actually changed a lot this year. And what we need now is a system, a time management system that is very easy to use, 
easy to maintain so that you can spend more of your time doing the work. And that's what the time sector system is all about. It's going to change your whole belief system about way, the way a time management system should work because this focuses on when, when you are going to do the task. And let's be honest, it doesn't matter how motivated, inspired or how urgent something is. If you don't have time to do it, it is never going to get done. And that's what this system is built around, getting your work done. So you can spend more of your time doing the things that you want to do. I hope you join me in this course. The full details of the course are in the show notes below. So please join me and thank you very much for watching this brief video.